uh, Canadian government spoke and said that your art could not be described as original sculpture. Would you agree with that? Ah, uh, yes. Why do you agree? Well, because it's not original. You have just then copied a common uh, item. Yes. Well, why have you bothered to do that? Why not create something new? Uh, because it's easier to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's authentic. Yes, very oh, much. And, and how much do they sell for now? <laughs> In that 1965 interview, Andy Warhol did not worry about fighting misconceptions. He preferred to quietly change art. The pop art pioneer used common household items and famous faces. But a new book reveals another side. This one captured through the lens of his Polaroid camera. Anthony Mason is here with a visual diary of more than 700 Polaroids. Anthony, good morning. Good morning. Before there were selfie sticks, before there was Instagram, before there were iPhones, one of America's most famous artists was documenting his life with the same dedication of millennials today. There may have been no filters, likes, or double taps, but there were plenty of selfies. These are very early self-portraits. These are incredible shots. These, this is after he had got shot by somebody called Valerie Solanas. Flipping through these pages of Polaroids is like reading Andy Warhol's diary. There are images of famous friends like Jack Nicholson and Liza Minnelli. Rule Golden yeah. is the book's editor. It's, it's a very early form of selfie. You know, it's as far away as possible as you could get from, you know, the Kim Kardashian, for instance, where it's all about her looking very, very glamorous and as best as she could possibly look. Warhol, it turns out, was an almost obsessive collector, amassing thousands of Polaroids, the earliest ones from 1958. I remember Polaroids when we first had them, and I think of them as very sort of disposable and almost not something you necessarily would keep. Oh, he kept everything. Michael Herman is the Andy Warhol Foundation's director of licensing. He began sifting through all these photos 18 years ago. The interesting thing about Warhol is that he didn't differentiate work from life so much. Everything he did was part of his uh, life as an artist, and these Polaroids very much speak to that. Some of the Polaroids became Warhol's famous silk screens. Others he studied for later works. With these pictures, Warhol mapped out his design for the Rolling Stones' Sticky Fingers album cover. Many of them simply chronicled life. All of them reveal the eye of an artist. How many of these were you working from? And if seeing the Polaroids in the book isn't enough for you, Christie's is auctioning off 129 originals later this month. The photos are expected to command up to $25,000. Well, talk to me about this one here. Andy seems to have had a, a, some kind of fetish with shoes and with, uh, with feet throughout his life. Mm -hmm. So it was something that, a uh, kind of motif that he returned to time again and again. The Polaroids are like Andy Warhol's Instagram, documenting virtually everything. It's just that he did it years before anyone ever heard of the internet or social media. Andy Warhol carried around either a camera or a tape recorder with him most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, pretty amazing how obsessive he was about documenting life and now looking at it in the current context to see how obsessive we have all become about doing the same as well. What do you think he would do with social media today? I think immediately you would think he would embrace it and love it, and he very well might have. But the one thing I love about Warhol is that he was predictably unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And he always embraced new media, but he was doing things new and different with it that we couldn't really think of at the time. And mm -hmm. I think that he would probably embrace it, but he would be using it in a way that we're not really thinking of right now. The book Andy Warhol Polaroids, published by Taschen, is on sale now for about $100. Nora?